you've all heard about the changes coming down the pike, right? You've heard it probably from us, maybe your employer, or maybe your colleagues, or maybe you haven't, and you do what my buddy does, and he buries his head in the sand, hoping they would go away. Well, the changes didn't go away, and they're finally here. Here's how it's going to affect you as realtors and loan officers. Title folks, you want to listen up, as this changes how you're going to do business as well. Now, I know this isn't a funny show and not the most popular topic, but don't click out because we have to know how this is going to affect us moving forward. Now, a little bit of a backstory here so we all know why the changes are coming. Well, if you remember a few years back when shiz hit the fan and we finally figured out that the Oprah Winfrey approach of you get a house and you get a house isn't a good sound housing strategy and a house of cards came tumbling down, well, because of that, there was legislation drafted and passed called the Dodd-Frank Act. Now, the act was drafted in response to the housing crisis and it addressed all the loose lending guidelines and its intent was to cripple the industry. Sorry, just joking. Its intent was to cripple the industry. Sorry, I can't even get it out right. Its intent was to ensure the housing crisis never happens again by implementing sound lending guidelines. There, I got it out. It's going to cripple the industry. Well, several years later, after the industry corrected itself and we're making the best loan portfolio seen in recent history, the Dodd-Frank bill is back and finally being implemented. Now, why did it take so long? Good question. This is what happens when government takes over an industry and tries to run it better than the private sector. Get my drift healthcare. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Nevertheless, we digress. Today, the CFPB is tasked with implementing the awesome strategies of yesteryear in the Dodd-Frank Act. First, the CFPB posted the no before you owe rules and forms just this last week. Now, in this rule is your new GFE, Till and HUD ones. And I actually think they got this one right. Here's what we originally were given by the government for our GFE and HUD one. Well, no wonder borrowers are confused. They see one thing when they apply for a loan and then something completely different when they go to closing. Yeah, no doubt. The current HUD and GFE are like reading Rubik's Cubes if you can figure that one out. Anyways, here are the new forms. In my opinion, easier to understand and actually quite helpful. This GFE will take place of the early till and the old GFE and now when borrowers go to closing, their HUD ones will look like this. Similar to what they originally signed at application and easier to compare. This form replaces the final till and HUD-1. So lenders, realtors, and title and escrow folk, if you want a copy of your own to familiarize yourself with, the links are down below. Now the fun stops here, as the no before you owe rule also states that the home buyer now has to wait three days after receiving the final documents to sign and close. So there goes your speedy closing time frames. This rules to give the borrower time to digest the final numbers and help them not feel rushed at closing. Again, I get where they're coming from, but I also know that that's gonna throw a massive monkey wrench in the entire system. Now, I'm on the national board of the NAIHP and I've talked with our president quite frequently and he was back in DC last week meeting with these guys. And we believe at this point that we may not have to wait the three days if your loan doesn't exceed the APR variances and possibly a few other caveats. Now don't quote us on that because the CFPB website just has a blanket statement of three days. I'm pretty sure though the three day rule won't apply if your loan fees, rate, and APR don't change. If your loan is the same start to finish, well, we should be able to operate as we do now. For this rule, we actually have some time to get used to it as it doesn't take effect until August 1st of 2015. The next rule, however, takes place in January. So this one's a bit more urgent. It's the QM rule that everyone's been talking about. Again, being part of the NAIHP board, I've been all over this thing from day one. And if you're not a part of an advocacy group, I do recommend NAIHP. Their link is down below if you want to be a part of them. Now, there will be several changes for the lender when it comes to QM, and this is a short show, so I can't cover them all, but one thing I wanted to point out is the oversight and the implementation of QM itself. For those realtors watching that don't really care or know what QM is, it's basically new rules and guidelines that lenders have to follow when making new loans. Well, I won't bore you with the details of the rule, I will pose a question. Who on the lender side is going to implement all of this new oversight? The loan officer has additional rules and steps while originating the loan. The processors do as well, and yep, underwriters and funders will also have additional oversight. Since mostly loan officers watch this show and not underwriters and processors, let's look at it from your angle. You go to originate a loan like you normally do, it takes as long as it normally takes, and then you're done. Except now, you have to make sure your new loan is QM compliant. 
you now have to run tests to make sure that you didn't go over the 3% cap rule and you now have to make sure your loan is an eligible QM loan and you now have to go down the checklist to make sure it meets all the new requirements and that's before you even print your paperwork and meet with your clients. So who's gonna do all this? Where does the liability lie and how much slower will the entire process be with all this additional red tape? All good questions and all something each company will need to figure out for themselves. Now, if you're an LO, you may want to figure that out with your company as this is sure to change how you're doing business and not necessarily in a good way. Now, I know this isn't a show that you would necessarily share on Facebook because it would probably bore the pants right off the consumer, but it's definitely something you would share within the industry. So share it with your managers, colleagues, and peers and get an early jump on this thing. And if you guys have any thoughts or questions, please post them down below and we'll see you guys next week.